All right, Bonjourno, good morning. It's your boy, Big Rich. Early morning business, a little wake and bake episode. The history of the commission. Gentlemen, come on in, wipe your feet on the rug, throw some smoke in the atmosphere, and let's get right down to business. The history of the commission from the NewYorkMafia.com. By the late 1800s, there was a tremendous influx and immigration of Italian immigrants from Sicily and the various regions of southern Italy from the Mezzogiorno coming to America in droves to flee the abject poverty and horrible living conditions they had endured for so long. Along with their brethren, many of Sicily's mafiosi, Campagna's Camoristi, and Calabrians of Societa Honore emigrated also. Most of these newcomers came through Ellis Island, settling in the teeming tenements of New York City's Lower East Side, up in East Harlem, the Bronx, and other Italian ghettos of the city. Some would span out, settling in other cities throughout the East Coast, Midwest, and California. But metropolitan New York was, and to the present day still is, ground zero for the Italians in this country. These early Italian criminals would vie for power amongst other ethnic gangs and each other for position and to control the rackets of the day, pitting Sicilians against Calabrian and Neapolitan racketeers. There were many killings over a period of 20 years or so, the culmination of which was the infamous Castellamaris War, which pitted one Sicilian faction against another. Once the battle was won by Salvatore Maranzano and his allies, Maranzano, an educated man who loved reading history about Julius Caesar and the Roman Empire, formulated a genius hierarchical structure system based on early Roman legions in Rome for the Brotherhood to follow. There would be five borgatas in the city, one in New Jersey and other various family groups throughout the country. Each would have a following, a capo, sotto capo, consiglieri, capo di decina, and soldati. These were to be the formal positions by every borgata. Augmented by numerous others called associati, he declared himself to be bosses of all bosses or supreme leader over everyone. But this heavy-handed approach was not appreciated by some of the other key leaders. Maranzano would be assassinated within months of his war victory and declarations in 1931 by Lucky Luciano and other plotters upon learning of Maranzano's plan to double-cross and kill them first. With Maranzano and a few other mustaches out of the way, Luciano would astutely form a governing body over all Costa Nostra that lasts to the present day, the commission. The commission will be staffed with the most important men of honor from the largest and most influential borgatas across the country. The year was 1931, almost 90 years ago. There is evidence that points to even earlier mob conferences, such as the 1928 Cleveland, Ohio conference at the Hotel Statler, and in several other cities by strictly Sicilian mafia bosses that was a precursor of sorts to this formalized commission. But the commission as we know it, of a blended underworld of all Italian factions from mainly Italy as well as Sicily came into existence in 1931. Changing the rules to absorb other purebred Italians of Calabria, Neapolitan, and other mainland Italians into their ranks, the families were now one cohesive monolithic brotherhood renamed Cosa Nostra, or Our Thing. The first commission is reported by mob historians to have arguably been staffed by the New York City bosses, Luciano, Magano, Profaci, Bonanno, and Gagliano, Buffalo's Stefano Magadino, and Chicago's Al Capone. Some say Cleveland's, some say Cleveland's Sicchio Milano was an original as well, but regardless of who actually sat on the commission, all family bosses throughout the entire country, or as they are more formally referred to as representante, or representatives of the families by virtue of their positions, are automatically commission members. The foremost purpose of the commission was and is to maintain order. It also sets general rules and policies that all families are compelled to follow. The opening and closing of the books, a euphemism used when the families are either inducting new members, the books are open, or in the period when no new members are accepted, the books are closed. The sanctioned killing of a boss or another important member. The decision to either go into a given industry or racket or to curtail the activity because of its detriment to the organization. 
and any other matter at hand pivotal to the Brotherhood's continued success and well-being. In recent decades, with the tremendous pressure and surveillance brought down on all Cosa Nostra by the FBI and other law enforcement authorities, commission members have been hesitant to meet, and with many family bosses and upper-tier leaders having been imprisoned, no formal meetings have taken place as years before. But make no mistake, communication between families still take place, and decisions are made, and decisions are made in a more careful manner. Our messengers between the Borgatas convey what is needed to be discussed by word of mouth only. It may be a slower process, but it is also a much safer process. And the beat goes on. Now here's a side note about the Appalachian meeting. The infamous 1957 Appalachian meeting in, the, in upstate New York at the sprawling estate of mob boss Giuseppe Joe the Barber Barbara was in fact a commission meeting in the greatest sense of the word. 62 of the most notorious hoodlums in this country were apprehended, and it was estimated that over 100 of the top Costa Nostra bosses across the entire United States and their key aides attended this massive mafia conference. This invitation-only gathering was thought to have been conveyed in the order to discuss a number of pressing and growing concerns in the Italian underworld. Among them were the decision to abandon narcotics trafficking because of the bad press and draconian penalties being meted out to fellow mafiosi. The recent killing of family boss Albert and Anastasia and several others and the attempted murder of Frank Costello. The penetration of undercover agents and suspected informers into the brotherhood. A disgrazia. The crowning of Vito Genovese to that family's throne and the ratifying of Carlo Gambino atop his family. And other members and other matters that would never get to be discussed because of a raid by the New York State Police on the ill-fated barbecue and a subsequent massive federal investigation for years to come, which in high sight was a major catalyst in the war against the mafia. So listen, maybe this meeting wasn't the best thing for them, you know what I'm saying? But again, a great history of the commission from the NewYorkMafia.com, of course, researched by Shattered. That's who found it for us, right? So salute to Shattered. Uh, I want everybody to have a good morning. Wipe your feet on the rug on the way out. Throw some smoke in the air. I got a little bit of Jolly Ranchers and Chocolo. Let me know what you guys are smoking on in the comments section. And make sure you like the video. Everybody have a good day. Mob Spotlight, Big Rich, Team Ruckus. You know the team. You know how we do. And, of course, today's video is brought to you by Justice Tech Pros. So make sure you go check these guys out. Go subscribe to his channel. All right? You let them know Big Rich. Sent you guys over there. The whole team, Dominic and the team, salute and good morning to you guys. Doing a great job over there, putting out videos to give everybody what? Information. We live in an age of information. Everything is data. If you can get information, information is power. Salute to everybody. Have a good day. Mob Spotlight, you know the crew that's bringing it to you. We will talk soon. And don't forget the wake-up show. We'll start at 9 o'clock.